Hello, this is Imagine Time, and today we're going to review the detailed time slip invoice. From the ribbon menu, click Billing Dashboard on the far left. The open dashboard is covered in another video. However, briefly here, we're going to set it to the date we want the bills to be printed. So April 20th is the day I'm choosing. That will also be the posting date for the invoices. There are some other options where your invoice display date can differ from your posting date by clicking uh, some of these optional buttons here. However, we're going to cover the simple option where both the invoice date and the posting date are the same. I'm going to click Open Billing Dashboard, and here we are. Dashboard lists our clients in alphabetical order unless we choose to use one of the other sort options. So right here I have the client that we're going to be working on during this video, all rise ropes and tassels. There's a couple of things that I want to familiarize you with before we get into the granular part of this demonstration. First, when doing uh, detailed slips, you have a wide variety of invoice formats. You can choose these formats by clicking on the detailed slip choice here and then double clicking your mouse and you have a display of the format options. Also important in this video is the basic format of the invoice. So if you click Invoice Format and Design, you can see a lot of choices you have regarding how to display the header, whether you want to choose a bitmap graphic or not. And today, when we go through this, the differences in showing expenses. You can show them summarized, below total charges, in detail, below, group them with the time slips, or you can subtotal them if you have a lot of expenses. So we're going to be using this feature here. We will also use the mini statement feature that allows us to display activity since the last invoice to show the customer confirmation of the receipt of a payment or any balance due. So these options are going to be referred to, this invoice format and design, and the actual detailed slip options, which can be drilled down by double clicking when detailed slip is displayed, or you can go into more format billing options and click detail options here. That's another way of getting there. The third and last general thing that I would like you to be familiar with is the custom header. Now the custom header allows you to put a header on the very top preceding the detail of the invoice. You do that by clicking on the custom header button at the top of the dashboard. Down here an area is exposed where you can type in the header you want for the currently highlighted row up here. And if you want to use that header the next time, you want to check this little checkbox retain header. So that header will stay in place unless you remove it by actually deleting it, highlighting it, and then pressing the delete button. Those are three things that you need to be familiar about with the dashboard in general to understand this video and also that once you've set up your invoice by releasing your time slips and your expenses and selecting your format options, you're going to hit the print bills button. If you've set up a lot of invoices, multiple invoices at the same time, you can preview all the bills at once. But for our training session today, we're going to print one invoice. So we're going to stick with the current row, the row where this little arrow is right there. And when we click print bills, it's going to display the invoice format that we have. So coming back to the dashboard for just a moment. The other thing that we use on the dashboard quite frequently is the release edit slips feature. Now that's necessary in order to choose which time entries you want to invoice. Here, under all rise robes, if the hold box is unchecked, then that time entry will be appearing on the invoice. Similarly, if we're billing expenses on the invoice, and we uncheck the hold on the expenses, those items will also appear. And they can appear, as we mentioned a moment ago, summarized in detail. They can also be intermingled with the time entries or grouped at the bottom of the invoice. But the first thing you must do is release the slips that you want to invoice. And there are some helpful things if you have a lot of slips. In this case, this client has 11. If you want to release or uh, hold a lot of slips, you can choose these filters here, a work code filter, or if I just want to work on a particular engagement, I can choose the engagement filter. In this case, I'm just seeing the year-end compilation engagement right here is where that is shown. And I'm seeing all the slips for that engagement. So I could, by by clicking this release button here, I could I could hold them all 
or I can release them all. And now I'm just working on that particular engagement. The same thing also holds true of the work code filter option and the task filter option, but the only two options we're going to work on in this video is the engagement and the filtering option. I should also mention that while you're in here, you can clean up the explanations for some of your time entries. They're missing punctuation, things of that nature. You can also change the hours if you feel it's appropriate. Now in order to do that, you need to have the rights to do that, uh, supervisor or system manager rights. But here we have the subset of things that we're going to bill, as well as these expenses, two items here. So I'll close the screen and I'll click print row and if I want to see more of it I can minimize the ribbon and here's what we call the standard time slip invoice when this first started 20 or 25 years ago invoices showed everything they showed the date the staff person you can show the full name if you like the nature of the description the hours the rate and the extended amount at the bottom of the invoice generally the expenses are shown in this case they are grouped by expense type there's also an adjustment here. We've written down the invoice by $18, so you have the option to show an adjustment or not. This is a subtotal uh, by engagement, year-end tax service, and then the compilation and corporate uh, work that was done on this particular invoice. So this is what we call a standard full display or all options wide open time slip invoice. What I'll do now is I'll show you how to change a few of the options on that invoice double clicking here. I'm going to turn off the adjustment so I'm going to suppress that, I'm not going to show it. And I'm going to bill this invoice at the standard amount. Notice over here that I'm hiding engagements and the reason for that is that I'm showing that custom header at the very top which happens to be the engagement. But if I was billing an invoice with multiple engagements I would uncheck that and you'll see in a later demonstration how the engagements will be subtotaled on the invoice. So let's go ahead after unchecking this and close this screen and notice that the slips at, at standard are 22 33 75 So I'm going to go ahead and bill that standard amount. If I was billing the adjustment, I would put in whatever I want here. But I'll reprint this. And you see that the adjustment now does not show on the invoice. Let's go back and do that again. Say I'm billing this for $2,000. This is the amount of time that's being cleared, 2233 at $2,000. So I have a $233 billing adjustment. If I wanted to go in and individually modify the realization on the billing adjustments, I could go and allocate adjustments at the bottom here. And on this slip, I could individually assign a value to each time entry, writing it up or down and it will show me as I go along how that works. However, in this case I'm going to let it do a weighted average measurement of that. So we click print bill and where is it? Well, it's not showing up and these numbers really don't make sense because nobody wants to see an extension of this be $50.37. Well, we forgot something. We need to go back in here and turn on show adjustments. Once we do that, we have the standard write down and the expenses and now it makes now the invoice makes sense again. If you lose your place like I just did, you can just type the client's name up here and you're back to where you were. There is another way to specifically value time entries on the detailed bill. You can click release edit screen button lower left here and you can designate the amount to bill. This can actually be done when you're entering the time and I'll cover this in a little more detail later on. So to recap, our total slips for this client in inventory are $27.53. We have $130 in unbilled expenses. Under the released column, we've released this amount and we've released all the expenses. For the time we are billing $2,000, the value of the time when added to the expenses is $2,130. Now on a detailed slip bill, expenses are billed 
at standard rates. You have some options on super bills to actually adjust expenses and bill them for more than or less than their face value, but on a detailed time slip bill, expenses are billed at their actual value. Once you have printed your invoices and satisfied of their content, then you can press post billing. And if you choose PDF here, you have the option to email the invoice out. Now the basic setup of this is covered in another video, but briefly, you want to generally display the Outlook window on send unless you're sending an awfully large number. You need to fill in the email address, the imagine time invoice is the subject, here's the body. You can save frequently used explanations by popping this up and creating some uh, typical explanations that you use. And you have to do a couple other things. You want a signature in here, so I'm going to use my signature. You can have a logo on the uh, attached email. You also want to click in here and make sure you have a drive letter and path to store the PDF file. That's the basic information that you need in order to get going and email the detailed invoice. So I'm going to go back here and click email. And it creates an Outlook window. Okay where I can now hit send and when this goes out it sends it with the PDF attachment. It inserts the amount into the body of the invoice and here is the PDF attachment for the actual invoice which if you double click on that it shows you the invoice content. So that's what your client will get. If you have our credit card option it will also have a click to pay on the bottom of the invoice where the client can pay it automatically. By the way, there's a bottom panel to the Outlook display window that uh, includes the Imagine Time Outlook integration option that's free and allows you to send notes into Imagine Time from the text of an email or if you have our calendar, create an appointment or uh, a task as the result of an email. So that's a free option and you can find that on the File menu in Imagine Time. We're now ready to post the invoice. At this point, we're going to move on and discuss the variety of invoice formats and settings to get the type of invoice that's appropriate for your firm. In the next section, approximately 12 invoice presentations are followed by the format settings that are required for each. The format settings use either the detailed slip bill display option form or the invoice format and design form referred to earlier in this training. The last presentation shows you how to create a detailed invoice using specified amounts entered on the after the fact time entry screen. Feel free to use the pause and scroll features to review this section thoroughly. Thank you for taking the time to watch this training video and enjoy Imagine Time.